Our story begins in the middle of the 40s, when a hopeful young soldier called Sam... Oh, uh, we're not doing that? Our story begins in the middle of last Tuesday, where a hopeless young freeloader called Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. Sam was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But not the actual spoon that he has in his mouth now. That is a different spoon. But a figurative spoon that represents all the wealth and attention that he has been receiving from his parents. And their butlers. And their butler's parents. You're a douche, aren't you, Sam? Blink twice if yes. <laughs> he can't hear me. This is Sam's girlfriend also not being heard by Sam. She's mad at Sam for his lack of responsibility produced by his large wealth. She also mentions the fact that Sam has forgotten her birthday for the third year in a row. Sam's girlfriend is upset. As with most rich and famous brats, Sam does not pick up on that. Instead, he decides to lay this gem. Things just work out for me, baby. I can't just run around and do stuff. I'd end up with a limp spine then, or something. Sam's girlfriend does something she should have done a long time ago. <laughs> Sam is laying unconscious on the floor. He gathers his strength and makes an effort to get up. Then he makes another effort to stand up straight. Sam is hit in the head so hard, he has to remind himself how to walk. He takes a right step. Then he takes a left step. Good job, Sam. You're very good at existing. Sam's face. He has to blink rapidly to regain his vision. Say something, Harold! Oh, gee. How is our son going to become a respected politician if he can't fend for himself? I thought he was going to become an actor. Well, then come on. Oh, what's the difference? L2 pied gauche, R2 pied droit. Il a croix pour cligner des yeux. C'est assez perturbant, mais c'est marrant. Sam remembers the one thing he's good at. Paying for stuff. So he turns around to pay for his beverage. Sam pays the guy 500 euros, barely covering the coffee. Thanks for the tip, douchebag. Sam decides to hurl another 500 at the guy, 
Not such a douchebag after all. Sam is hurling stacks of 500s left and right. He has no perception of money. Sam is about to spend his whole weekly allowance on tipping a barista named Tony. He really was hit hard in the head. Holy feces. I'll just start my own coffee shop. Once again, Sam makes someone quit their job by tipping them too much. So long, suckers! <laughs> Sam spends a decade making his way out the door, which is pretty good for a guy with a major concussion. As Sam waggles outside, he sees his girlfriend on the other side of the road. Sam pulls himself together and rushes towards his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. This is when a septic tank truck approaches Sam with an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. The impact renders him eight types of dead. Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. Sam does not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. Then he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. He checks out that horrible, the other horribly irritating sound. The source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise, the grim reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on Sam. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam, and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude! Your soul be like a diamond! Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. For reals? Aight, man. It decided. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, 
and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay. But for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a minesweeper. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. Could be worse. Whatever. Kinda sounds fun. <laughs> Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... a struggling freelance artist. Oh my. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. No! Oh, this is truly hell! <laughs> Well, looks like it's time for lunch, dear sirs and madams. Uh, take all your concern-related concerns up with upper management. See you in five hours. Sam has seen enough. He goes back to death and his deal. He keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the Gatekeeper of Hell. Whenever that's going to be. Hehe. <laughs> I, bro. I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now. Sam has just traveled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive, and more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, yeah, you look horrible. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. Oh, cool. You'll be alive. Everything be fine. All right, so this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kind of have to do stuff on purpose. Um, you'll be turning kind of blue. Might want to consider breathing. <gasps> All right, bitchin. You be blinking and breathing. That be bitchin. So, all right. Go survive for a day, and I'll let you live normally for the rest of your life. If you somehow die within the next 24 hours. flips if in you need me. Once again, Sam has to make an effort to get up, 
This time, he has to focus on his spine. And once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. Yeah! Sam's vision is blurrier than a Norwegian teenager at a wedding. He decides to blink. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, right, let's see here. Yeah! Yeah! Let's oh. Blink, Sam! Blink! Relax my body. Bend in my knees. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Wrong, it's know. going to be a long day. Yeah. Blink, Sam! Blink! Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. <sighs> blink, Sam, blink! Sam tries to take a leak. Hey, dude, have you seen my... Sam takes a leak on the floor. Sam takes a leak on the towels. Sam takes a leak everywhere, including, but not limited to, himself. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. Blink, Sam, blink! Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. Blink, Sam, blink! Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen again. Blink, Sam! Blink! <gasps> How hard is it to blink, Sam? Sam is clean as a whistle. Good job, Sam. Your spine, Sam. It matters. Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. With clean teeth, Sam is ready to smile. He won't for at least 24 hours, though. Oh. 
Clean and empty, Sam decides to find some clues. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Yeah! Yeah! Hi. Sam can open doors now. Clever boy. What is over there, Sam? Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Again. Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? He picks a pair of blue jeans. The ugly ones. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen again. Sam successfully puts on his pants, feeling more accomplished than ever. He proceeds to find a jacket. Only the best one will do. He settles for a mediocre one. Humble. Fully clothed, Sam is ready for the day. P.S. He's not. He puts on his shoes. Living the dream of having shoes on. Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. <sighs> Sam decides to hurl himself down the stairs. Apparently too used to hurling money around. Flappy Rooster is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a Flappy Rooster right now, though. That was either supposed to or not supposed to happen. We'll never know. Following this story at this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... Hey, Lucy, I'm home. Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. <coughs> Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Again.
Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip. Or not. He decides with some coffee in his system, Sam finds it easier to exist. Sam hurls coffee into his eyes for reasons unknown. Out of cups, out of hope, Sam hurls coffee into his eyes again, for reasons still unknown. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, stupid. want to get that hood fixed it it be loose uh yeah i'll i just get in the car yo Hey, dude, I turned your automatic gearbox into a manual one for the funds. That be ironic or what? At this point, Sam notices that Dev isn't really a nice guy. I guess I should teach you how to drive a stick, huh? Hehe. <laughs> Alright, so, when starting the car, you want to press down the clutch pedal. Nobody has clutched anything for years. Good luck, Sam. Now, while you have the clutch down, press the gas pedal. As you let go of the clutch, the car will start moving in bits. Good job, dude. You ain't as useless as you look, know what I mean? Now, to stop, you gotta move your right foot to the brake pedal. Left for us, he means. And, obviously, press it down. Give stopping a go, dude. Nice! Now, start driving again, like I showed you. And, obviously, you turn left and right with your arms. If you want to drive faster, you gotta use the stick, baby. To upshift, you press down the clutch and then yank the stick. <laughs> Sam passes out from lack of air. No one notices. I 
Obviously, you can't turn left when your hand be on the stick. So to turn left, you have to move your hand back to the steering wheel, y'all. And so Sam and the Lord of Damnation are on their merry way towards a new adventure together. Cozy. Sam passes out from lack of air. Dude, no one notices. Old lady on the road. Yo, go right, bro. Woo. We almost killed that lady. She ain't due for another a few hours. Listen, if you kill somebody before their time because I messed up your So keep your eyes on the road. If you almost kill someone, I'll stop the car, yo. But then, you'll have to start it all over again with the clutching biz. Right? We'd be good to go. Anyway, dude, you're probably wondering why all this biz be happening to you. To tell you the truth, bro, it be all part of bureaucratic bull feces. The shreds are left, yo! Stop! Sheesh, what was I saying? The shreds of life you give to those gatekeepers to get into hell? Yeah, they be distributed between the bank of hell and Satan. Oh, Sam passes out from lack of air. Me? No one notices. Then, the bank of hell distributes their share as salary among the sick. Go left. Oh, stop, you homicidal maniac! Get out of the road, friggin' hag! Anyway, then the Bank of Hell distributes their share as salary among the citizens of Hell. Do you know how much my salary be? A little less than a burger flipper at Mickey Demons, yo, and a little more than an elementary school teacher. You know what I be saying? Up high. Never mind. A soul has one, maybe two shreds on it. Go left, bro. Stop! Homicidal maniac! Sheesh! What was I saying? A soul has one, maybe two shreds on him, depending on his life quality. And I don't want to point fingers. But someone here be a spoiled brat, bro. Dude, you had seven shreds. You have any idea how rare that be? I be scamming. I mean, making deals with bratty soul. Right, yo. Close one. As I was saying. I be scamming. I mean, making deals with bratty souls that have more than two shreds of life for an eternity, yo. And I only got 295 shreds of life, bro. <laughs> what be that gray cloud in the middle of the road? Oh, feces! That be a whole school of old ladies! Get ready! Left! Ah! Right! Stop, you homicidal maniac! Right. Ah! Left. Ah! Yo. Ah! What be up with all those old ladies today, bro? Hey, Sam. You're never gonna make it to work on time with all these grannies everywhere, dude. What do you say we take a shortcut? <laughs> Go left. And so Sam drives the car to a place 
he has never been before. A place called Bridge Street. Oh, 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 dude. I hope it be safe here. Hope there be no, say, crazy gang members here or nothing. No, really, though. Where be the crazy gang members? Oh, crazy gang members. Oh, excuse me. You be a crazy gang member? Ooh, don't you worry. I know where the crazy gang members be. To Death's surprise and Sam's relief, the gang members are lying dead on the ground. This is when Death notices a distinct silhouette in the distance. What be the deal, bro? Why be there... Oh, oh, the silhouette is contention and enmity, bloodshed and hostility, strife and strike, struggle, battle, war. She is neither wearing dumb clothes nor doing kickflips. She is just standing there. After a job well done. Oh, holy feces, holy feces, it be her! I'll be my breath. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Okay, just don't be yourself. Hey, War, how it be going, babe? Wanna hit your ride in these sweet wheels? Holy feces, here she comes. Hey, girl, where to? Just shut up and take me to the metro. Aren't you supposed to, like, reap a bunch of people, you knucklehead? I was, I was. But then I got bored, so now I hang out with my buddy Sammy here. Ain't it right, Sammy? Stop here. Stop. <laughs> okay, we can go. So instead of guiding endless amounts of confused souls to the afterlife, you waste time with this dumb, ugly mortal. Stop here. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want a cigarette? Ugh. You are so annoying. You know I'm trying to quit. <sighs> Fine, give me one. I hate you. Go right here. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Hey, guess what? I totally landed a kickflip today. Take a left. Left. What, you got sand in your ears? Now we gotta take the next turn. He's kind of slow, isn't he? Turn at the next street. Uh, just take the next turn. Stop here. Okay, let's go. Wow, you really landed a kickflip? That's kind of... Yeah, or, well, I almost landed a kickflip. You know, Famine can do a frontside kickflip. Such a show. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Grandma's be back. Yo, go left. Yo, stop. Left. Stop, you homicidal maniac.
never be getting used to those grannies. Stop here. This is where I get off. Stop. Stop. Stop, dude. Hi, babe. I'll see you around. Whatever. What you be looking at? Oh, snap! You be getting late for work, bro. Step on it as hard as you can if we gonna make it. Go, go, go! Faster, faster! Faster, dude! Get up to fifth gear! Yo, faster, faster! Yo, faster, faster! Yo, dude, faster! Faster, dude, get up to fifth gear! Yo, faster, faster! Yo, faster, faster! Almost fast enough, dude, step on it! Almost fast enough, dude, step... Oh, feces! Stop! Stop! Uh. Feces! Did we kill somebody? Oh, please let it just be a rock or a hipster or something. Sam goes out the door oh. to see what happens. Oh. He only has to follow Death's crying voice. Oh, no. 